Oh, uh, that was an old photo of me. <laughs> So, hello everybody. As the, I guess, Dumbledore announced? I don't know who that's supposed to be. I'm Jeremy Elborn. And I'm Miles Malerba. And we are members of the Angular team, work on Angular material. Today's actually Miles' first day on the Angular team, so I just pulled him up here to have some company while I was on the stage. I didn't want to be alone. The project's been going on for about two and a half years, spanning from AngularJS many years ago to Angular today, and over the course of all of those versions and the evolution of the framework, it has built about 50 plus components, tons of commits, and over that time frame, we have learned quite a lot about building components, and we wanted to come up here today to talk about some of the design practices and philosophies that we've developed over time so that you can all take those and go back home and apply them to the, your own components that you're building. Having thoughtful use of custom elements for your Angular components, and more specifically, when not to use custom elements. Um, hold on a second, Jeremy. I thought the whole point of components in Angular is that we can wrap up a whole bunch of stuff inside of a custom element, and then we can just kind of take that custom element and you know, put it anywhere we want in our app. I see a lot of benefits to what you're saying here. Uh, we get to you know, give the users a familiar API that they already know how to work with. Uh, it's like an accessibility win because uh, the, the uh, screen reader already knows how to handle these native elements, and it even simplifies the implementation for us. So yeah, so I can see that uh, that's, that's a pretty cool approach, and you can use that for any kind of you know, more complex component that's made up of interactions between smaller pieces. So, you know, things like autocomplete, date picker, and data table. I've been working on this slider component, and I have the DOM for my slider, and I'm finding that there are certain cases where I can't really think of any good solution other than to just directly touch the DOM. Steven was mentioning this experimental Angular universe a little bit during the keynote, which is a tool that allows you to pre-render your Angular application on the server so that the user can see something on their browser very, very quickly. And the, the problem, as you noted, is that you don't actually have a DOM to interact with when you're on the server environment. And we found in looking through all of the components and what they're doing that times when we need to drop down to the native APIs fall into two categories. There's things that happen only in response to user interaction with the application, and things that have to happen on the initial render of a component. Angular has really good protections built into it to guard against XSS vectors in your application, and if you circumvent Angular's APIs and start building large swaths of your application on your own, <laughs> Angular having thoughtful interactions with that Angular zone uh, so if you, if you don't know what it is, uh, zone is something that Angular depends on. It provides an asynchronous execution context for the Angular application. There's a few more things you should probably know of about building applications, uh, but we don't have time to talk about those today. These are available at the short link, and I will also mention it's not actually Miles' first day on the Angular team. That was a narrative device for the talk. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>